Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. Today is a Saturday evening, and I trust that you are well. Um, it turned out not to be such a bad day after all, in terms of the weather, at least. Uh, started with a bit of flurries in the morning and turned into rain, and then brightens up. Such is the British weather for me. Anyway, I know there are some places where there is lots of snow. Uh, and um, Prasi has told us that there's snow where she is. And uh, so, yeah, but we haven't gotten much. We haven't gotten any, as you can see, here in East London. Anyway, let's come and say goodbye to the day and um, seek God's mercy and grace as we enter into this night. So let's pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your glory is proclaimed in all the world. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. You gave your Christ as a light to the nations and through the anointing of the Spirit, you established us as a royal priesthood. As you call us into your marvelous light, may our lives be a witness to your truth and our lips never cease to proclaim your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And um, we're going to say the canticle from Revelation chapter 4. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise forever. You are worthy, O Lord, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests, serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God and you are worthy of our praise forever and ever. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts, to set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And our evening prayers. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace and in the renewal of our lives. Make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And two evening prayers this evening. Come, my light, and illumine my darkness. Come, my life, and revive me from death. Come, my physician, and heal my wounds. Come, flame of divine love, and burn up the thorns of my sins. Kindle in my heart with the flame of your love. Come, my king, sit upon the throne of my heart and reign there. For you alone are my King and my God. Amen. Keep us in peace, O Christ our God, under the protection of your holy and venerable cross. Save us from our enemies, visible and invisible, and count us worthy to glorify you with thanksgiving, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, world without end. Amen. And our psalm this evening is Psalm number 85. Psalm 85. 
Psalm 85, you, Lord, showed favor to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again, God, our Savior, and put away your displeasure toward us. Will you, be re will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people his faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Amen. Restore us again, O God, our salvation, and put away your displeasure toward us. Verse 4, will you, will you not revive us again, O God, that your people, may rejoice in you. Maybe that's a prayer for us during this time of lockdown and pandemic. Will you not revive us again, O oh God, that your people may rejoice in you? We look forward to the day when we all return, as it were, to, to, the, to, to the building, rejoicing and giving glory and praise to God uh, uh, for his goodness and mercy. To us and however God brings us out of this place that is our prayer that is our prayer will you not revive us again it's as if we are flagging and God needs to revive his people maybe maybe this pandemic is God's way of reviving his people again who knows uh, let's um, read one of Keller's um, Meditation, true concord, love and truth, the meaning of faithfulness, must meet in harmony in verse 10. But how can God in faithfulness punish sin, yet also in love embrace sinners? Christ reconciles all things in heaven and earth by making peace through his blood. When Jesus bore our punishment on the cross, love and holiness kissed. They were both fulfilled at once. Love without holiness is mere sentiment. Righteousness and law without a grasp of grace is Phariseeism. Our natural temperaments incline us to one or the other. But the gospel keeps truth and love together in our lives. And the more they are united within us, the more we are brought into the deepest relationship with those who believe the gospel. Lord, your salvation brings all things together. Yet we do not give ourselves to people in friendship and community as we should. We are too wary of opening ourselves to others to be vulnerable. Let your love heal us of all our fears. Draw us closer to your other children and to all your people so we can all have you. We can have all you want to give us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, our evening reading of Matthew, Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, from verse 34 to the end. Matthew 22, 34 to the end.
Matthew 22, 34. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together one of got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply. And from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. All right, the greatest commandment is, is enough really to give us to reflect on tonight. Um, the greatest commandment, Jesus says, that it's been challenged by an expert in the law, someone who, who knows the Torah, that is, the Torah, that is the law, the first five books of the Bible. And this person is challenging these, Jesus to test him, which is the greatest commandment. Well, of course, in the other gospel, we are told that this person was very pleased with Jesus' answer. But Matthew doesn't give us that bit of the information. Jesus said, there are two commandments, two greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and then love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. All the teachings of the law and the prophets. In other words, the entire Old Testament system of laws and regulations hang on two commandments. Love God and love other people. And, and there you go. The, and love people, love God, love people. That's it. Um, our first and our first duty, our first priority, our first uh, our first allegiance is to God. Of course, we 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 love God first, and then we show that love that we have for God for other people. In other words, we we imitate God. By loving others. Now, of course, as um, it is, uh, the problem with us, of course, is that many people uh, they don't have this kind of love for God, and um, and of course, if you don't, if you don't have the love for God, and then you don't have the same love for other people, and there are people who may have love for others but not love for God. Love for God is a prior prior love. It's, it takes priority. And, and, and how do we show our love for God? Well, we show it in our worship. We show it in our adoration, in our obedience. Jesus, Jesus tells us, if you love me, you will obey me. If you love me, you will keep my commands. Uh, the, 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 we, we love God. We show our love for God by our our fear of God and our worship and our reverence and our in our in our respect for who God is in our reading of his word in our in, in in gathering for worship even though now we are not physically gathered but we are gathered when we when we come around as it were the the, the, the technology uh, and we are all worshiping together that's a gathering and and it means that you, you allow yourself not to be distracted by the doorbell or the television or whatever else is in your house, but rather your focus on worship. Love of God begins with worship, begins with realizing, recognizing that uh, 
he alone is to be given all authority, all power, all dominion alone. His name alone is to be exalted. And then how do we show our love for other people? How do we show our love for our neighbor? Of course, um, we show our love for our neighbor in our kindness and compassion to them. And of course, in proclaiming the gospel to our neighbors, sisters and brothers. Let's be clear. The greatest, um, the greatest example of our love for our neighbor is to tell them about Jesus, is to, is to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to them. You know, it's one thing to feed the hungry. It's one thing to give food from the food bank, and we do. But we are feeding the body while the soul is, is perishing. And, 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 and so we are to be just as concerned for the body as well as for the soul. Or we should, we should be as concerned for the soul as we are for the body. Just as much as we want people to be well and to be well fed and to eat right and to have a place to live and to seek justice and, and so forth and so on. We also want them to know that Jesus loves them. And they need to believe in him and trust in his salvation on the cross or else they are going to perish forever away from God into what Jesus calls a place where the worm never dies uh, and, and they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So sisters and brothers, that's our love for a neighbor. We show our love for a neighbor by telling them about Jesus. And by helping them, by showing them kindness, compassion, but both must go together. And we show our love for God in our worship of him. And I, was, uh, I always remember, as, as I've always said, this commandment does not tell us to love ourselves. We love ourselves instinctively because that's the nature of sin. The nature of sin is self-love, self-centeredness, selfishness, self-love, anything um, that, that, that focuses on self, that's sin. Uh, uh, the commandment is trying to move us away from focusing on ourselves to focusing on God and other people. We are to love other people in as much as we love ourselves. So just as our, we want food for our bodies, we must want food for other people's bodies as well. Just as much as we want healing, we want justice for ourselves, we must want the same for others as well. So let's pray to that end. Let's pray. Our Father, we are grateful for your goodness and mercy in bringing us to the end of this day. Lord, we think of the, the two commandments, the two great commandments, to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And none of us ever do that totally, completely. And so we fall short of that standard. And then you're You've called us to love our neighbor, to love others in the same way that we love ourselves. And again, we fall woefully short of that standard as well. And so, dear God, we first ask forgiveness. We ask that you will forgive us for falling short of your commands. Forgive us, O oh God, for missing the mark, the, the, for sinning, for missing the target that you have set for us to love you with everything, every fiber of our being and to show love for others. Forgive us for the fact that we have fallen short of these commands in our lives and we have never done it. We have never ever done these things perfectly as we should. And yet, Lord, we ask for your grace to be able to do, do, do this every day so that every day we get better at loving you and loving others. And so Lord, every day may we grow in this, in, in, in disobedience, so that we too may grow more and more, knowing you, loving you, and loving others. Lord, we ask this for ourselves. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And tonight we want to bring all those that are on our hearts and just to entrust them to God, especially as we 
as we um, anticipate tomorrow's service, where we shall gather around the table, as it were, and partake of the 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 supper and the 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 food that our Lord has provided for our nourishing and for our healing. Even though we are not together, sisters and brothers, do do participate in some way at home, symbolically, as we as we do this in the building tomorrow. So let's remember these names now and tomorrow. Noel and Maxine, Pauline Haywood and Pauline Buckle, Tavern and his wife Salima and his mom Selvi, Auntie Janie, Jean and Walter and Monica, Adi, uh, Glynis and Claire and Bob in Upminster. Remember also Constant and, Constance and Michael, Maxine's sister and family in Canada. Alicia, Jenny's friend. Sammy, Mrs. Carr's brother. Sandra, Deborah's neighbor. And today we are, uh, this weekend, we, to, today, Ann Turner has asked us to pray for Dave. Who is, who is severely ill in hospital, a friend of the family. So we pray for Emily um, it's, uh, and we pray for Dave, her stepdad. We pray for the family during this difficult time. We pray, Lord, our first prayer is that you will raise him up. We pray, Lord, that you will bring healing to Dave. Secondly, Lord, we ask for your strength for the whole family. We ask, Lord, that you will remind them that you are with them. You're with Dave even at this moment. And you are with, you'll never leave them for, nor forsake them. And that, you love, and, and that you'll always be there for him and for them, whatever the outcome of their situation. And so, Lord, we pray that they will trust you. They will draw near to you during this difficult time. And they will feel your presence near. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, Lord, we bring all these to you. All these, your children, who have asked us to pray for them. And we pray for, for your mercy and grace upon them. Hear our prayer for them as you hear their prayer, the prayer of their own hearts tonight. And for all of us, Lord, as we say goodbye to this day and retire to the night, we pray that you will watch over us, guard us from, uh, from all that's evil, and give us a, a, a restful, peaceful night, Lord, we pray during that, that during this time of lockdown and pandemic that you will remind us that you are on the throne. You are in charge. You are the sovereign Lord and that you are ruling despite what we see with our eyes. We do not look on the things that we can see, but we look with the eyes of faith. And that tells us, Lord, that you are in charge and no matter what, no matter what happens, we know that it will all work for your, for our good and for your glory. And so tonight, Lord, we entrust ourselves to you and our lives, our families and our friends and our world and our country, the doctors and nurses, the carers who look after those who are sick. We present them all to you tonight and we entrust their work to you and we pray for your help in all this in jesus name amen amen guide us waking O lord and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with christ and asleep we may rest in peace into your hands O lord i commend my spirit for you have redeemed me O lord O god of truth keep us O lord as the apple of your eye Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven.
hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you may the lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and give you perfect rest tonight sisters and brothers as you sleep amen may the lord in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen good night one and all